My name is Yi Ying Chung, and I'm a researcher at the National Institute of Standards and Technology. This presentation is a brief summary of our paper, Passwords Keeping Safe, Understanding What Children Think About Passwords. First, here is a NIST disclaimer. School children are engaged in technology and cyber learning at very young age. In fact, today's primary and secondary school children, referred to as digital natives, have never experienced a world without technology. Children are exposed to more and more systems designed specifically for them, as well as accessing and using ubiquitous applications such as social media. Many of these systems require authentication. Most of the research in usable security has focused on adults with reports on adults' struggles with passwords. But what about children? To understand current children's password perceptions and behaviors, we conducted a study to answer the following research questions. The first question is on children's password understandings. What do students know about passwords? Why do they think they need passwords? What are students' password perceptions? The second research question is on their password behaviors. How do students create and maintain passwords? What are the characteristics of passwords they create? We develop a large scale survey to understand what challenges children face regarding passwords. A total of 1,505 US grade school students completed the survey. We were 425 elementary, third to fifth grade students completed the survey. Out of those 425, about 52% were girls, 40% were boys, and 8% did not specify. There were 357 middle schoolers ranged from sixth to eighth grade, 50% were girls, and 45% were boys, and about 5% did not specify. 723 high school students, 9th to 12th graders, also completed the survey with 51% girls and 45% boys, and about 4% did not specify. The average age for elementary students was 9 years old, for middle schoolers was 12.5 years old, and for high schoolers was 15.8 years old. From the survey results, we found that across all age groups, students reported that parents and school played an important role of providing guidance on good password practices. Younger children rely more on their family in helping them create and remember passwords. For example, about 90% of elementary school students reported having parental help in creating their passwords in contrast to only about 15% of high schoolers reporting having family help. Moreover, about 43% of the younger children reporting getting help from family members in remembering their passwords, as compared to only 12% of middle schoolers and 4% of high schoolers. Additionally, almost half of middle schoolers, 47%, and a third of high schoolers, 34% reporting assisting their family members with remembering passwords. Students reporting some good password practices. Across all age groups, over 90% reporting memorizing their passwords. As they grow older, they got better at limiting writing passwords down on paper. From about 47% of elementary students down to about 35% for middle schoolers and high schoolers. And very high percentages, over 90%, reporting keeping their passwords private, with middle schoolers and high schoolers getting close to 98%. And over 92% reported that they sign out after computer use. However, as students grow older, they started demonstrating some risky behaviors. For example, older students were increasingly more likely to share their passwords with friends. While majority of high schoolers, over 98% responded they keep password private, almost half of them, 45%, also revealed that they share passwords with friends. And middle schoolers also reported sharing 
patchwork of friends at an alarming rate of 40%. Risky behaviors like password sharing by early adolescents can be explained from developmental perspective. Friendships with peers become gradually more prevalent and intense during early adolescence. Friendship formation process in which self-disclosure and the sharing of secrets is a key component of intimate relationship formation. Adolescents regard the ability to share secrets and to talk intimately as the two primary characteristics of a best friend, forming trust. Another bad practice we found was password reuse. Similar to many research findings on adult password practices, as children age, they were more likely to report that they used the same password for everything, from 58% of elementary students to 80% middle schoolers to 87% high schoolers. In the survey, we asked students to create a password for a hypothetical new computer game. We performed analysis on those passwords created and found that the average length of the passwords generated was 10 characters long. We further examined the distribution of different character types used in those passwords. We found that lowercase letters made up majority of their passwords, about 50%, followed by numbers about 35%. Many of the passwords contain passphrases or multiple common words. We specifically examined the passwords for the following three types. Numbers only passwords contain all and only numbers. For example, one, two, three, four, five. Dictionary word. Passwords use a single dictionary word. For example, baseball. And dictionary word plus. Passwords use a dictionary word plus numbers and or special characters preceding or following the word. For example, Emily123. For all numbers, we found that significantly more elementary schoolers, about 32%, created passwords with all numbers, as compared to 13% of middle schoolers and 8% of high schoolers. Only a small percentage, under 5% for all age groups, created passwords with a single dictionary word. However, as children age, they tend to create more dictionary plus word, passwords, from about 9% of elementary schoolers to 18% of middle schoolers and 16% of high schoolers. When looking at the words used, many resemble names potentially containing personal information, which can impose security risks. We also ask students to write down their answers to an open-ended question. Why do you think people should use passwords? Qualitative responses were coded using inductive thematic two-cycle coding process into four main thematic codes, access, protection, privacy, and safety. Students frequently specifically mentioned securing their personal phones and computers and they were particularly concerned about access. And as children get older, privacy becomes more prevalent in their responses. For example, the top three themes for elementary schoolers in descending order of percentages are access, safety, privacy. For middle schoolers are access, privacy, safety. And for high schoolers are privacy, access, safety. Privacy became the top thing for 71% of high schoolers. Example for access, an 11th grader wrote down, passwords are to keep unwanted people off your device. For privacy, an eighth grader thought passwords are to keep stuff private. For protection, a 12th grader wrote down, passwords are to protect information. And for safety, a fourth grader thought password can keep us safe. In conclusion, we found that children have complicated relationships with passwords. On one hand, their perceptions about passwords and statements about password behaviors are appropriate. On the other hand, however, 
they sometimes illustrate bad password behaviors. It is important to promote positive user perceptions about passwords early on, as we found that children have reasonably accurate perceptions and knowledge of passwords and authentication. Thus, cybersecurity education should strive to reinforce those positive perceptions while continuing to provide and promote security understandings. This study also reveals that students frequently discuss the significance of passwords very generally and vaguely, often using one or two words like information, stuff, and safe, and do not put their password knowledge into practice. This raises questions about whether or not students actually understand why certain password practices exist versus just knowing about the practices. This, in turn, raises questions about whether or not, without a concrete understanding, they will consistently make appropriate password choices across technologies and technological applications. Lastly, children as young as third grade understand that passwords pro provide access controls, protect their privacy, and ensure their staff safety. They also practice some good password practices, such as memorizing passwords, limiting writing passwords down, keeping their passwords private, and logging out after sessions. However, many students exhibit password behaviors that do not align with their stated understanding of passwords, such as sharing passwords with friends, reusing passwords, and using personal information when creating passwords. This gap between students' stated password knowledge and their password behaviors it's an important next step for research surrounding children's password use and education on how to bridge the gap. Thank you for your attention. Please email us if you have any questions or inquiries.